No, I'm not bringing you any faking pudding, you self-entitled prick. Aww. But I want some figgy pudding. What is figgy pudding? I don't know. Is it pudding made out of figs? I don't know. I don't know either. That guy is such an asshole in that song. <laughs> what song is it? This is a bring me the figgy pudding. Bring me the, the, I don't know. But he, he said, oh, I won't leave until I get some. I won't leave until I get some. It's like, <laughs> oh, Christmas shit. Why am I singing Christmas songs? Because you're in the holiday spirit. Mm-hmm. You came over to my house and you saw the Christmas lights and you're like, oh, you have a Christmas tree. And I just took a family Christmas photo. You did. I did. Mm-hmm. I, I tried to look as awkward as possible to embarrass my family. And you did. Good. But what's funny is your mom and dad even looked worse. Did they? <laughs> I felt bad for calling your mom Skeletor. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Reminds me, he used to call a person Skeletor. I think it was one of the COs. I don't remember. <laughs> it was who? One of the COs. C-O-O in um, prison. Yeah. <laughs> I know what I needed to change. That's what I needed to change. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We took off. The echo and reverb. Echo and the reverb. Yeah, it was bugging me. <laughs> so, not last week, but the week before, we were talking about you in prison. Prison. And we left off, and then we talked to Jesse, and no. got carried away and didn't talk about it. That's cool. Yeah. So, uh, where did we leave off? Was it... Uh, I was in Pahrump, Nevada. 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 Yeah. That's that little holding facility where it's like all bunks, right? Yeah, it was about a hundred man uh, dorm, um, bunk beds. You got fifty bunk beds in the middle, and then you got um, about maybe ten toilets in the back. No. How many toilets were dedicated for making wine? None in there. Damn it! That place was pretty strict. They had a they had a CEO in the in the dormitory at all times, and it was not really a CEO. It's not like they're actually a correctional officer they're a paid citizen because it's a private facility but private security officer yeah um but they and they can't carry guns they carry mace on them <laughs> really yeah yeah they have like their their big bear mace things oh so it is like the bear mace shit yeah so they look intimidating i have never been sprayed with bear mace i had that tear gas shit happen there i've had there. tear gas <laughs> and i've had pepper spray yeah, that's a. I don't know if I talked about that last time, but that was one of the crazy things that happened there. Is what happened? What, what, what happened with that? Um, there was mm. two groups of. This chai is really good. Is that the regular chai? It's the black chai. Just the black chai? Yeah. Have you tried their double chai? What's a double chai? I don't know. Double spice chai. That's what it says. They have two different kinds. Fucking A. Okay, anyways. And here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Tea. Delicious. Mm. But I'm drinking coffee right now. Fuck you. Yeah, the coffee's good, too. <laughs> Tea's better. Um, anyway, yeah, there's two groups of gangs that were fighting. Um, I think it was the the Paitas and the Serenios. What's the difference? Uh, Serenios it's are... just colors. I don't understand gang culture. Um, they're both uh, Hispanic gangs, and okay. um, you got, like, for their, the main Hispanic gangs, uh, I'd say... Um, there's a bunch of offshoots as well. Like, it's really complicated. I don't even understand it all. I just kind of get the gist from being around. I don't understand the difference between gangs and the mafia. Um, I don't know. I don't really get it either. I've always, like, why does the mafia get so much respect and gangs don't? They're pretty much the same thing, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, in my mind, maybe, maybe it's, it's all like, organized crime. Maybe it's a, a, a status. Is it because or, mafia is more for... Upper white males. And That's what I was thinking. For yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I was thinking maybe it's a a class. Anyway, uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So the Pisces and Strenios, they got into uh, a beef about um, controlling rights. I think the um, one control the laundry and one control the food. No, uh, the like entire, pretty much the entire uh, dorm since they are so small. Um, they. Just, they, there's like a, a overriding authority. And Paisas usually get that authority because there's just so many. And a Paisa, I mean, a lot of people claim Paisa, and I don't think that it's really like 
it is a gang, but it's not. It's like reentry and other things like that. You'll you'll come in and then um, somebody's like, well, we're going to take care of you. You claim PISA and then you go back and be deported and you're not really in the gang anymore. It, that's kind of how it is okay. from my understanding. Uh, and so, but while you're there, you take care of each other. And so like 50% of the prison population is, is the PISA. So they have an overwhelming control. Um, and the Serenios um, didn't like that. So they were out, they were outnumbered anyway, but they decided they wanted to do something about it. And they, filled a sock full of batteries and uh, hit somebody over the face with it. <laughs> yeah. I don't mean to laugh because that was scary fucking shit. suck. It's scary shit, man. <laughs> but can, I just pictured button batteries. <laughs> not button. Like, I know they're not button batteries. Well, they're like but, double A's and stuff. But oh. that's what I pictured. And I was like, ha ah. <laughs> in, in In the federal holy, or the federal facility that I was at, they actually had D batteries and they had padlocks as well. And those were often Holy used. shit. Yeah. Um, well, that wasn't the worst, but I'll get to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, the, so they, they filled the sock with uh, double A's or triple A's, one of the two, and um, whacked, whacked some guy over the face with it. And I'm going to Instagram this shit while you're doing it. Oh, sweet. Yeah. And um, then... Damn. Okay, so the the CO came over, tried to break it up. It wasn't going to happen, so they went and they locked themselves in a room. They called. Um, it was pretty much just breaking out, like, riot. And I heard footsteps on the roof of the building, and I was like, shit, something's going to happen. And I saw a canister fall through a pipe that they had strategically placed in the center of the room and it was on a chain it was a tear gas canister i immediately knew something bad was happening so i ran back to the shower so the tear gas canister was on a chain yeah it was on a chain so that the inmates couldn't have access to it and it would spray on everyone oh okay yeah. so they hung it from the from the roof on a chain so it wasn't dropped in it was dangling <laughs> And I was like, fuck. <laughs> and so I, I ran to the back of the facility. And this is like the worst three weeks of my life. <laughs> but I went back there and I took a, took a towel and got it wet on the shower. And I just put, my, put it over my face and head and like laid down. And I was, Did it help? It helped, yeah. yeah. I don't think I got like very bad. Like I was like itchy and stuff, but I wasn't really. It wasn't too bad. No. And some people got the hint and saw what I was doing and they also ran back there and started doing it. I mean, <laughs> half the half the people weren't even involved, you know? Yeah, oh, but they don't give a fuck. They don't give a fuck. No, it was uh it's a riot in a dorm and if you're there, fuck you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Except for the CEO, they can lock themselves in their own room. So <laughs> Really? Yeah, that's what happened. It was a um I don't know, like it was it was interesting. Uh she she did try to spray them with maize first, and that didn't break anything up, and so that's when she went and locked herself in the room. I was told a long time ago, um, this was back when I was in high school, that the strange kids at another high school would spray themselves with pepper spray and maize yeah. get used to it. Uh-huh. I don't know if it's true or not. I don't even know if you can get used to it. But I thought it was... It. Just, when you said it didn't phase them, yeah. I, I, I've seen... And then wasn't uh, wasn't there like some hardcore show where there, something went down and the cops got called? And- oh my god, yeah. It was, at, uh, <laughs> um, it was at the basement of DVA. I can't remember who was playing. I think it was All Out War. Might not have been All Out War. Can't remember. And did you ever go to the basement of DVA or UTM? Yeah. Um, there's a terrible place for a club. Like right where... You know, you'd have your pit with big poles holding up the basement. Mm-hmm. It was in a basement, so there's no, like, easy access out. Mm-hmm. Um, but apparently, one of the owners of the club was outside just talking mad shit and all the straight-edge kids that were inside. And one of them overheard and went inside. And so they went out and just beat the living fuck out of him. Mm-hmm. Um, they actually curbed him. Um, That's terrible. But, yeah, the cops were called, and before the cops came in... We didn't even, I was like 15, I think, mm-hmm. you know, 
15, 16? Maybe 17? I can't remember. Right around that time frame. Like, we had no fucking idea what was going on. We're just in the show, and all of a sudden, before anything happens, the cops just come running downstairs spraying mace. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyways. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> I heard I heard something about like there was a show like two two groups of people were fighting and uh, they they got tear gas out or something and the one people or mace or something and they were used to it and so the people who were used to the mace just kept fighting and the other people were crying and the cops were like shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I heard the same thing. I had the, heard the same story about uh, some straight age kids at Current High who mm-hmm. got into a fight. Mm-hmm. Um, and the police officer at the high school to break up the fight sprayed with maze and didn't do anything to them, mm-hmm. except all the other kids were coughing and they had to evacuate the school. And they're like, fuck you! You know, like, it doesn't matter. I don't know if it's true. Yeah. It's just the shit you hear. <laughs> <laughs> so. So, what else happened at that prison to make it so bad? Because um, you're only there for like two or three weeks, right? I was there for three weeks. Three so. weeks, yeah. Um, I saw a guy get stabbed there. What did he get stabbed with? Uh... The razor that was made from like a, I think it was like a, I can't really tell, like a pencil and a. Was it an actual razor blade like hooked to a toothbrush? Yeah, uh, what they what they do actually? No, this guy's was made out of um, plastic. Like th- it was just sharpened plastic. Yeah, it was it was a tote bin that mm-hmm. you put all your stuff into, and they had taken their razor blade and just cut a, pe- a knife out of it, and then, um, they're sharp. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> And so, it I don't it didn't go very deep, and it didn't kill the guy obviously, but it um, it was over TV because he didn't want to change the channel or something. It was white TV day, and a black guy wouldn't change the channel. That's uh, that's prison for you. Well, fuck, man, you gotta live by the rules. Yeah, he didn't. Uh, he didn't. Oh, God, that's <laughs> so, so ridiculous. Yeah, and so, so and, and then on top of it all, uh, there was no exercise allowed because somebody had injured themselves exercising, <laughs> um, like lifting weights. They injured themselves, or they yeah. got to fight and use them as it. No, they yeah they injured themselves uh, like <laughs> not properly lifting weights, <laughs> and so um, well they didn't they didn't have any weights there. They were doing push ups, and yeah. but they were they weren't. You know, they were like so you couldn't having even, people hold on to them and stuff like that. You know, so you couldn't even like couldn't do sit ups and like self workout at all. No, they said no, no working out at all. Would they? Did they allow tai chi? Uh, no, because that's actually a martial art. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. You're not allowed to practice martial arts, and so, um, so they 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 banned that. There was no books at this facility. Um, there were in other pods, but my pod just happened to not have any. Because I think one of the one of the people had hoarded them all, and they had them all stored underneath their bat- mattress, and then you had to pay them to get books or something. I don't know. So are these all the problems that arise by having it being a privately operated prison, or uh, is it I, just because? I think so. I think a little bit of it was yeah. a lot of that because they're just new and they don't understand how prison works, and these people are all. Um, mostly experienced prisoners. They've been to prison before, and they're just temporarily there again. Yeah, they're like. Yeah. Look, I'm here temporarily. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna do what I want. I'm gonna do what I do. Yeah. And so, um, and then, but they didn't have any working radios, and the only way to watch TV was with a radio. So the people that had radios, I mean, were long timers, like people that have been there like three, four months, either waiting for an appeal or whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. And so they all had their radios, and, um, and like that's the people that like got stabbed and stuff. They're long timers. They've been there. They're probably frustrated with each other. Um, so it's, it's weird to say long timers are three or four months. No, long line timers considering like, uh, well, I know it's just, it's consi- a weird facility. Yeah. Considering like, um, most people are like the high risk people are out of there within the, within the same day. Um, lower risk people will stay there one, two, three weeks, maybe a month. Um, and that was me. I got. I was thinking I was three, four weeks there, and um, and so yeah. From that place, like it was just no mental sim- stimulation. The only people there were people talking about how they just wanted to use again, and it was just shit. So 
Um, and then from there, where'd you go? Um, they flew me out of there one night, and I was pretty stoked because I finally thought, yeah, yeah, I'll go to a prison. But no, I went to Grady County, Oklahoma, from Pahrump, Nevada, and it was just a shithole toilet of a jail. Like it was, it the conditions were the worst that I've ever seen of any jail. Yeah. But I liked it better than Perum. <laughs> <laughs> I know, weird, right? But basically what they did is they're like, it was just some random county jail in the middle of Oklahoma in like, hold on, like... The, like the marshals just like contract with? Yeah, 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 because they don't have enough people to actually fill the facility. Yeah. Because it's a small town. And so everyone that's... And that's in, why they use Davis here, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. And so... But I mean, Davis is a bigger place than Prom or than Grady County. Grady Davis County is, is pretty big. Yeah, it's Grady County is like. Uh, I looked out the window. It said, "Law Office," and then there was barbershop. It's like a small town. <laughs> Weird, and so um, they they pretty much took us up to. Um, just a, a room and just locked us in there. And I was laughing because I went down and when I was changing my clothes out, um, it's typical. And I was used to it at this point because I'd already been, you know, through the system. So, so much that, um, they're like, okay, strip down and change your clothes out. And so you get completely nude when you're stripped down. Yeah. That's just what you do. And I was going to pull down my boxers and, the cop said, whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, it's cool. No, just leave those on. <laughs> and that's what I immediately knew. Oh, you guys don't really do it. You're not you, you really dealing with it. You know? <laughs> and, then, and then they're like, and so then they took us up to... You're like, I have a shank in my asshole. I mean, you honestly could have. And like, we were just sitting out there talking and there's like, you got, like one of the guys was helping out. And he's like, oh, you're helping out here. Have a Coke. Really? Yeah. He was helping out. Um, he wasn't a federal inmate. He was a just a, a local inmate. Yeah. But um, so, <laughs> yeah, it was weird. It was really weird. And then what they did is they locked us into a room for, I think I was there for four days, maybe. I don't remember. But, um, yeah, they did, pretty much they came in. When they came in, you had to just stop what you were doing and... Then they counted you, and then they left, and that was your only interaction with them. When they fed you food, it was through a slot in the door. I don't, this was maybe like twenty people in there, and so we were all just federal prisoners. And um, did you get vegan food at that place? No. And and I I mean I kept trying to. I probably would have eventually, but like I was only there for four days. Yeah, I, could, I don't even remember you being there. Yeah, it was it was really. Because I don't think we called there. No, I don't. Uh, I had filed. Like, I don't think you guys knew I was there, really. I think we. I don't. Yeah, I don't think I knew you were there. Like, it was just. It was between. Uh, they usually stop you off at Oklahoma City, and that's a big federal transfer center. Mm -hmm. um, and that's usually your first stop. But an overflow, they contract out to Grady County. Yeah, because I remember we just heard you were in transit. That's yeah. all we got told. Um, and that's pretty much, yeah. And. So we were all just waiting. We didn't really know what was going on. Um, but there was some, like, I don't know. The, like, the, there was a shock collar, and he pretty much was an insomniac, so it was funny. Shock collar? Shock collar. The guy that calls Oh, shock collar. Yeah. I thought you, he, like, wore a shock collar or yeah, something. No, no, what no. the fuck? It's a uh, shock collar, somebody who calls all the shots within the, yeah. within yeah. the facility, um, whether it's your pod or whatever else. So, and so... Um, he was just an insomniac, so he was up all night, and he really liked me. He thought I was hilarious, and so me and him would just play dominoes all night. But he was like this big, giant dude. Do you play chicken he, feet? I don't know. I like chicken feet. I've never heard of it. That's why you couldn't come out multiple directions. Come out multiple directions. Yeah. So you can play off of the side. Yeah, and you can make, like, trees. and it's, Oh, weird. It's, no. it's a weird way of playing. My grandma always played that way. Anyways. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it was really funny because uh, the tables were made of metal. Mm -hmm. And so, by the way, these dominoes were snuck in because <laughs> the, I think I think uh, 
one of the inmates from locally snuck them in for us because uh, I don't know how, but they would got in. Yeah, yeah. We weren't supposed to have them. And so we would just be playing late in the night and he would just smack them on the table. He'd go, smack, give me five. <laughs> Although I only played ten rolls, I don't know how you play. I, f- I haven't played in years. So I don't really. Yeah. We don't. We don't count fives usually. But he would just be like thirty, fifteen, and it just. <laughs> it was hilarious because everyone would jump and wake up and look over and like be angry, but then they couldn't say because he's, the... he's just a giant. And he would kill them, <laughs> and so like I thought it was hilarious, and I was having the time of my life, like because it was just as hot, hum- like human room and. I wasn't getting fed enough and I'd probably dehydrated. So it was probably loopy out of my mind anyway. No, not enough sleep. So I just thought the whole situation was hilarious. It was probably nuts. But <laughs> from, from there, we finally split us up into other areas. And uh, I finally got sent to, got put on a Texas bus. I didn't know where I was going. All I knew that I was going to be in Texas somewhere. Yeah. And so... Um, finally, like even when I got on the bus and everyone knew where everyone on that bus was going to the same facility, I asked the guy and he didn't tell me like, that's how just ridiculous it is. And so we got to the facility and I'm like, will you tell me now where I am? And he's like, you'll find out in a second. <laughs> so it's, it just digs. And so, um, I was, uh, at, uh, Latuna, Texas. And I always thought it was really funny to put a vegan at Latuna. Uh, so <laughs> while there, I I got a tattoo of a tuna can with my expiration date because I thought it was funny. Yeah, the, expir- it, the expiration date, date being the day I got out. And isn't the the wrong date? Uh, I think it's a day or two off, isn't it? Yeah, it is because my my release date was the twenty. What was that? I think it was the but it fell like a Sunday or something yeah they fell on a Sunday so they, they had yeah. to release me two days early so fuck the government you got up two days early yeah yeah I got two days <laughs> free so yeah. after that whole experience it equated to what how many months in jail was it total including the first four uh ten ten months total ten months total <laughs> what do you Anyone else facing the same thing? Like anyone else facing, you know, going to a grand jury resistance? Anyone else? else? I mean, it's getting, it almost seems more and more popular right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know they, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't say that. But um, the the, the lawyers have told me that (laughs) that it's been, I mean, that it's been used as a threat. Towards like, people who are facing towards injury, people right? who are facing so injury. what would you say? I mean, is it fucking worth it to resist? Like, uh, and it, it, it's always if, if it's worth is. What is the best way of resisting? Like, it's always worth the resisting. Well, um, I don't know if I did it again. I probably just wouldn't show up. <laughs> like honestly, <laughs> because. I got I got ten months because yeah, but then they can just make you show up. There's not really a way to make you show up. Like if they subpoena you, you can still be held until your court date. Yeah, yeah, you can be. Um, but you could you could if you really wanted to play that card. I mean, I don't know. It depends on how much you wanted to resist. Me, I was kind of well, we, not smart about it. Well. The, <laughs> What's hard about your case is that we, and everyone we know, including your attorney, were going off previous grand jury history towards mm-hmm. target towards armed rights activists, and never have they. Ever and then and they've never gone down this path before. Like, no. It's a whole new path. And they never charged anyone criminally. Uh, well, they they have. They they've charged. I was the third person in the United States history that they ever charged criminally after serving after you know, already yeah. serving time for the same act of recalcitrance. So. Yeah. Um, the, I always forget the term recalcitrance. I'm always just like, eh. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. the terminology of it is way... Yeah, my head. it's... Uh, I sometimes... I don't... I didn't know any of these big words before I fucking got subpoenaed. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I didn't even know what a subpoena was. I just remember being <laughs> really shocked. It was like, you'd been in... 
I don't know, two months, maybe two and a half months mm-hmm. at the time. And it was when you filed your Grumbles motion. And then... Oh, explain what the Grumbles motion is so people uh, know what we're saying. Grumbles, um, it, it's, uh, it was a case, I think, Grumbles versus the United States, um, where it's proving that while, while you're being held in a grand jury, um, initially it's civil contempt. So they can only hold you um, as a way to coerce you to testify. So it can't be punitive. It can't be punitive. It can't be punishment because you didn't... You haven't really broken a crime. You haven't done a crime. They're they're just coercing you. It's a weird loophole that they have. Um, And that's what's really weird about mine is that after I served time civilly, they then went and recharged me criminally and it became punitive. Yeah. And that's that's what's weird because it hadn't happened. Yeah, so decades. I remember when we were going to your Grumbles motion, we're like, oh. he's fucking proved time and time again he's mm-hmm. not going to cooperate. This has been yeah. hard line. He's an asshole when you go in. You're just like, fuck this system. Mm-hmm. You, you've been in front of a judge a couple of times. I remember when you went in front of the judge, the judge was like, well, since you studied and you know your rights, mm-hmm. I'm not going to grant you this. Yeah, it was... Uh, I'm like, like how... Like, Oh, so you read a book and now mm-hmm. it's fucking ridiculous. The her argument was that I since I since I knew that I had a chance of getting out of prison with the Grumbles motion, that I had hope, which means I wasn't fully being coerced because I knew my rights. But if I didn't know my rights and I didn't know that there was something called a Grumbles motion, then it would have been punitive. So then why, after the Grumbles motion had passed, wouldn't they say, oh, it's not punitive anymore? They technically... It's really funny. Or it's not coercive anymore. It is punitive. Yeah. yeah. Because uh, technically, at the end of the four months when the grand jury expired, the last day of the grand jury, they reheard my Grumbles motion... They accepted it. This is the last day of the grand jury. I didn't know this. Yeah. I would have gotten out anyway. Yeah. Because it was the last day of the grand jury. But they accepted my grumbles motion, and then they said, but we're charging you criminally. And so the the difference was I got, a, I got out a week earlier because the grand jury was set to end on a certain day, and um, the fact... But they... They only meet every other Tuesday. Mm-hmm. And so they met the Tuesday, but it was ending the next week. So I proved the way I won my Grumbles motion is I proved that there was no way that I could testify at the grand jury anymore because even though there's a week left of it, they're not holding any more meetings. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a week out of my Senate. Jesus Christ, I didn't know that part. Yeah. Oh, fuck. <laughs> and so. But they, the very last day of the grand Who was the assistant DA? Uh, that was uh, John Huber. Fuck you. Fuck you, John Huber. I'll say it for you. Fuck you. He, he, uh, he actually said that I'm a really outstanding guy and that he wishes me the best. Yeah, but I remember the first interaction you had with him. You said, fuck you, you're trying to put my friends in prison. I may have said that. <laughs> well, he tried to shake my hand. <laughs> I know. I was just. I was. I mean, I'm not. I'm not recommending. I mean, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Resistance <laughs> is resistance, but I'm not recommending following them. And, and I will be honest. I don't care how anyone fucking read this. I will support them. Yeah, yeah exactly. No. Resistance, resistance. I'm yeah. fucking got your back. But if you want uh, to be a little bit smarter about it, don't say that. I remember, like, don't in between the different grand juries, we were always joking about like the shit you should do. Mm-hmm. And then we'd come out and you'd be like, yeah, I did that. You know, like the whole like Dave Chappelle pleading the fifth routine and yeah. like all this shit. And we're always like, fuck no, you never did that. There's no fucking way you have the balls to do that. <laughs> and then like when they followed you criminally, they had to release all that stuff <laughs> in your, because it was part of the well, criminal. Yeah, they were trying to say, they were trying to prove that when I raised my hand to plead the fifth, when I went one, two, three, four, fifth. <laughs> And held my hand out. They were saying that I was holding my hand out in disdain for the government. <laughs> so, like, they had to put all this in the motions, and we're reading this going, "Holy shit! 
you really fucking did this. In my, in my, in my, <laughs> when I was taking it to trial, they were going to actually, um, and didn't they want to play the Dave Chappelle? They wanted to play the Dave Chappelle audio. And I, I asked my lawyer, I said, well, you have to get him in as a, as a witness to explain the intent behind that. And he said, you know, if we do take this to trial, it's a possibility that I can, like, that I can, I can see you Dave Chappelle. And I'd be like, no, that'd be fucking mean. <laughs> That'd be so mean. It'd be fucking awesome. It would be. Uh, excuse me, just Mr. Chappelle, but uh, you're being summoned to court to <laughs> to explain to this explain. skit. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, it would have been. Cool. If no one knows what it is, mm-hmm. I'm gonna put the audio to that at the end of this. Okay. So stay tuned. I'm gonna add the audio to the Dave Chappelle skit because yeah. it's fucking hilarious. I mean, it it honestly like. Uh, seeing, seeing other transcripts from other people's grand juries that have resisted, um, they do they do the right thing. They're, they're a lot more eloquent. They, they say uh, <laughs> they explain what rights that they are using, and they also answer their name. They also take the oath. And, and just to be clear, you didn't do that. No. Like you didn't answer your name. You refused to take the oath. Yeah. You refused to state your data. But all of it was this is a. In a hard stance. No, I was resisting. Complete resistance. Yeah, I didn't want to cooperate. Whatsoever. Like at all. Like there was no cooperation. No, I. Uh, but I didn't know what I was doing either. I, I knew that. I, I but looking back on it now, would you do it differently? Yeah. Really? I I love how you did it personally. I no, I would do it differently. I I just wouldn't show up. Yeah. And that's for that's for strictly for legal reasons because they charged me 10 months for didn't josh harper do that at one of his grand juries um or was it gina lynn i'm i'm not, I'm not or maybe both i don't know i or neither i don't the, know the difference the difference being is they charged me um they charged me 10 months because um obstruction of justice is what they because of how you resisted yeah it wasn't um i didn't i didn't get charged with obstruction of justice they actually dropped the obstruction of justice ha- enhancement that they tried to pin on me but they charged me under the guidelines of obstruction, oh, obstruction of justice, of justice. because yeah. they didn't have any other guidelines to follow because they've never really charged anybody this way and so um but failure to appear is zero to six months and so if you don't show up then you're only now, is that zero to six months for each instance of not showing up? Meaning you were summoned four times? So couldn't that be a total of 24 months? Uh, I, don't, I don't believe so. I think it's all the same grand jury. I, okay. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not a lawyer. so. But um, I think, <clears throat> from what I understand, I was only charged with one um, one act of yeah. you know, contempt. Even though it happened over multiple. Yeah, and it happened over three think. times. So... so <sighs> But I, I still believe that I didn't I didn't do anything to break the law. Like no, I, I, I can yeah. I uh, I did plead the fifth, although I pled the fifth um, uniquely, I still pled the fifth. Yeah, yeah. And you're you're actually not supposed to say I plead the fifth, you're supposed to say I'm invoking my Fifth Amendment privilege. But the grant the Supreme Court has stated that ignorance of knowing how to invoke your privilege doesn't mean that you can't invoke your privilege. Yeah, and it shouldn't mean that. And it shouldn't. So if I say I plead the fifth, it's understanding. It's understood that I was meaning to invoke. Was meaning to invoke, yeah. So, um, and so there's that. But they said that my me pleading was not a bona fide privilege. Well, they didn't they claim that because they gave you immunity? They only gave me immunity on the very third grand jury. And at that point, I was already in prison. Yeah, but isn't that what they used to current charge you criminally, though? Uh, no. They, they, um, because they had put me in already. Okay. They granted me immunity, um, but on the third grand jury, this is how it went down. Um, you, depending on your area, uh, federally, you have the right to speak with your your lawyer after every question that's asked. You're not allowed to have... <laughs> so I don't mean to laugh, but you know that that's horseshit. You, you have the right. You have the right to. But they, it's a yeah, pain no, in the ass. Exactly. And so, um, 
you're just quick thing about grand juries. Uh, you're in a room of your peers. You have the prosecutor, and then you have your four people, um, and then there's three, four people, and then there's a one four man that's uh, in charge of everything, mm-hmm. and then um, you have a court recorder, and then you have your grand jurors that are which is usually used. How many? Um, it depends, depends on the grand jury. It depends it? on the grand jury. Uh, I think mine was twenty-four. And aren't they hand selected by the prosecutor? Uh, I believe they are. Yeah. yeah. Because um, most 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 juries are selected by the prosecution. The only thing with the grand jury is that there's no opposition. So, like in a typical jury, you can have your defense attorney say, "Well, I don't like that guy to be on the jury," so they nix. And they can recall individuals. Like if a prosecutor likes a certain person on a grand jury, he can keep recalling that same individual. Correct. I'm, I'm not sure, um, but it wouldn't surprise me. And um, so, anyway, they. Where was I going with this? They. Um, Fifth Amendment. No, no, uh, no, it was my asking lawyers oh, question. Yeah, so um, I was my lawyer's not in the room with me. That was the point of this. Um, and actually, one person was in the room, and they sort of violated. And I never really brought it up, but um, one person who was in the room that did not swear an oath to secrecy until the second question that was asked, until they realized, and that was the marshal. Because the marshal had to be with me at all times because the third time I was shackled. Oh, okay. And so they didn't swear him to secrecy, but... Um, it's such a weird thing. You're yeah. sworn to secrecy. Yeah. And I didn't uh, agree to that either. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, just saying. But it doesn't, doesn't matter. Um, but is it against the law? Yeah, it's contempt of court. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they uh, they threatened to charge me with contempt of court if I release my transcripts, and I said, "I'm in jail for contempt of court." <laughs> but, 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 um, okay. What the fuck are you gonna But do? I but I never have released my transcripts. Uh, not that I have anything to hide. Uh, <laughs> um, but they they were they. Uh, I think they were public knowledge or something because I've seen well most of them were in your criminal court which yeah, were, were yeah, unsealed exactly. yeah, yeah that's yeah. why they, they were unsealed for that unlike other people who were called to testify who claim that they're working on it they're working on proving that they didn't do anything Nikki? yeah currently she's saying that? no she said that when uh, when I called her out for I, I it's pretty yeah. long standing now that everyone knows it that she did. Nikki, what's her fucking last bell? What was her uh, name? Stanford now. She's divorced, I think. Nikki Stanford cooperated oh. with the grand jury. Yeah. And uh, she should not be allowed in activist circles no. or to be trusted. No. I think that's common knowledge. It should be common knowledge. I mean, it's not. Hopefully, no. that's one thing you need to get the word out on. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, so back, back, I just drag on. Um, <laughs> I I was called in front of the or the, the grand jury this time and he asked me what my name is or something and I yeah he asked me what my name was and I asked to speak with my lawyer <laughs> because I have the right to ask after every question after every question <laughs> and so, what's your name I need to speak to my attorney <laughs> he said and uh, so he hesitantly he said you're not speaking with your attorney, you're going to answer my question, or something like that. And I said, no, I have the right to speak with my, my attorney after every question, and I intend to do so. <laughs> and so he said, all right, we'll take a short intermission. And since I was in martial custody, um, my lawyer was out there in the hallway, but the marshal was sitting with me the entire time. And I said, I'm not having lawyer client purpose right now. You're listening in on the conversation. I'd like to speak with my attorney in private. He said, well, we'd have to take you all the way downstairs. And I said, if I have to talk to my attorney in private and that's what you need to do, then that's what what you need to do, yeah. So they took me down into the basement. Um, They're probably just like, fuck this kid. (laughs) 
It's like, the, the marshal is in there, so he's no. Yeah. He knows the question is what's your name. Yeah, he's just like motherfucker. Like, well, they. He actually he was talking to me while putting me in. He's like, oh, this usually goes really quick. You'll, uh, you know, just talk to him and you'll be out. That's what he said to me. <laughs> And I get in there. He's just like, you know, just yeah. doing his normal job. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, yeah. You just, I mean, you go in there, you talk, you're not being charged with anything and you're, you'll be out in a second. And I get in there and he said, yeah, we're, we're going to need some more time. So I, he was just talking to another, I think he was talking to a new marshal that had some familiar. He's like, yeah, this isn't typical. This is not typical. And so he, t- he takes him, <laughs> takes me down to the, into the basement and I talked to, my attorney, um, and we discuss the question. Mm-hmm. It takes about two minutes or so. Um, we decided that I don't need to answer that question because um, I had already answered it in a previous grand jury. <laughs> so I. Um, I'm sorry, it's just fuck this bureaucratic yeah. system. Like, it's so ridiculous. So he exits the room. I mean, it's a paneled class thing. And 30 minutes later, they come and get me. I was sitting in the in just an empty room for 30 minutes waiting for them to take me back up. And they said, so you've had more than enough time to talk to your attorney. So I'm going to ask you again, what's your name? And I said, as I explained, uh, I believe I've already, this question has already been answered at a previous grand jury. And it's been established that my, that you know what my name is. Yeah. And so they're like, we're just going to, just for the record, we're going to make the assumption that this is Jordan Allardy or whatever. Something yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. And then they asked me, um, I think they asked me where I lived or something. And then I asked to talk to my attorney. And they said no. And I said, I have the right to talk to my attorney after every question that's asked. And he said, this grand jury's over. <laughs> so, did I break any laws? No, I, I don't disagree. They, they put me back in prison after that, and that yeah. was the final straw. That was when I had immunity. <laughs> really? I didn't know that when you had immunity. Oh, yeah. that's, oh, that's fucking ridiculous. So I... I don't know. I didn't have... I don't feel I've broken any laws. Was I being a complete dick? Yes. <laughs> yeah. But that's not illegal. No, that's not illegal at all. No. And you should be. I, I, no, I was using my rights. Yeah, exactly. You know. And if it's a dick to use your rights, then it is a dick to use your rights, but it's still my rights. It's still your rights. So, yeah. Deep down, I don't, I don't believe that I did anything. Um, but I, I, did, I did plead because um, I had the intent to refuse. And if I, if I had to, I'd keep refusing. So, um, yeah, that was, that was that. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, you just, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know why I'm laughing, <laughs> just your face right now, you're just like, oh, motherfucker, it's, I can't believe all that shit happened, because it went over, like, I don't think people, a lot of people realize, it was years, yeah, it wasn't just like oh this was ten months and it was no this was a period of years of this yeah. happening. Um, I mean, what what when did the FBI I, first come into your work? Uh, I was twenty when they first came to my. And work. you're twenty five. Yeah, I mean this is yeah. it wasn't just two thousand eight when they first. Yeah, it was a it was a very long drawn out process. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the one thing I would say to people is like just because you know things are happening now it doesn't mean it's going to end anytime soon and that's no. shit news to hear yeah but you gotta be prepared you gotta mentally be ready to exist the long run if you're going to resist if you want to call yourself an anarchist you want to call yourself a radical a vegan anything you don't even have to call yourself you could be a law-abiding citizen that they just want to fuck over <laughs> Not that I'm not a lot of bikes. No, exactly. I'm just saying, like, you could be your stereotypical patriotic American that you just rub some prosecutor the wrong way by bumping him into him in the street. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the sad thing about grand juries. That's why they're fucked up, and that's why they shouldn't exist, and that's why I refuse to cooperate. So, yeah. So, uh, I was going to mention, though, uh, apparently... Someone read a 
that's the statement that I had posted while I was in prison mm -hmm. at a grand jury thing the other day. Mm -hmm. It just weirded me out. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're like in the audience. It's, and they cheered. It's like, they said that, said like, I don't know, they are saying all this stuff, and it really, I'm going to be straight up, like, it really weirds me out when people look at me as, like, an icon or something. Like, like they look up to you and, like, it's fine. Yeah, because I'm just a dude. <laughs> you know, it's, it's one of those things that, like, like, I don't feel... I like, feel like in activist circles, it seems that it's talked about, like, well, yeah, if this ever happened, I'd do this, and if this ever happened, I'd do this. Mm -hmm. But until you're in that situation, mm -hmm. you don't really know how people are going to react. And unfortunately, you and I have both seen mm -hmm. people who you would think would have always said they would stand and they would resist and do this and that, and they end up not. And so that's why people come to it, because, it's, you know, just because you're in an activist community or you're in a radical community... Or in any community, and you're just like, I know I'm going to stand up for myself, I'm going to stand up for my right, I'm going to stand up for my community. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you're going to when push comes to shove. And when people actually do that, like yourself, that is something to aspire to. It is, you know, I will say it's what should be done, you know, and in hopefully the radical communities will get to the point that it's not something to aspire to, it's the norm. But unfortunately, we're not there yet. No. You know, so you shouldn't feel weird about it. You should just, you know, help other people realize that, hey, you can get through it. There's life after. Mm -hmm. You can move forward. You can grow a funky fucking beard when you're in prison like you did and <laughs> everyone think you're Muslim, which is awesome. You know, whatever. You can do what you want. I had a scary beard. Yeah, you did. You had a really fucking... It was gnarly. My favorite picture is right when you got out. Uh, you is with, We were there and Iz picked you up. Well, you picked up Iz. Mm -hmm. And the, the picture of you, it's this huge fucking beard, and you're holding this little, little girl. It's, like, so cute because you're like, you're fucking scary. Cute little girl. My beard came in handy. I was able to hide uh, my homemade plugs. So, I don't, I don't know if you want to talk about this or not. If not, I'll put a big beep in here, and, and we'll edit it out. But the entire time you were in prison, you kept your septum pierced. Yeah, I did. Like, you had to hide a piercing the entire time. Yeah. That's fucking awesome. Well, I actually had a I had a nose ring in, um, and then like I had a I had a I had a septum retainer in, and it was anodized to be the to look like to, it was, to yeah. look like my nose, in the inside of my nose, and then like a week or two after being in there, I couldn't find it. It was I think I swallowed it. <laughs> like I had to. The way the prison's set up, I had to report to the white shot caller yeah. and inform them that I had contraband and it was missing. I think it's somewhere in my room. And so all the white people helped me to try to find it. And they were sweeping everything. They sweeped my entire cell and we just couldn't find it. So uh, it's just assumed that I swallowed it. <laughs> So weird. Okay, anyways. Anyways. So the poll we did last week. Yeah. How do you work out? Um, How did you work out in prison? Or did you work out in prison? Um, I did sometimes. I mainly um, I mainly just ran around. Like, when I was in the federal prison, they had a track on the outside, and so I ran around the track. So I did sit up sometimes, too. I think it's funny that we're talking about this, mm -hmm. as I have Oreos in front of me. What the hell? Oh, it's the feedback deal. Oh, fuck. Love that. I always say no feedback protection. Fuck you. Okay. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it, this is something that's always bothering me. Like, when I hit about 25, 26, 27, <laughs> it was n not easy to maintain a low weight for me anymore. If that makes sense. Yeah. So it's been bothering me for a couple of years. Like, I'm not overweight. And neither are you. Like, we're not, like, overweight. We're not, you know... I got a little chub on. We're not fatty McFat fats. No, but I do have a little chub. Um, I'll probably get criticism for saying fatty McFat fats. No, you're referring to McDonald's. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, McFat like, when I got married, I weighed 135 pounds. You know? I can't even wear my wedding ring when I got married because I'm too fat now. Wow. Yeah. 
Not that I'm fat. I weigh 100 and anywhere between 158 and 163, depending mm-hmm. on the day. Right now, it's probably on the higher end because I'm mm-hmm. eating Oreos. <laughs> so I'm not like fat or anything, you know. But I can't get myself to work out consistently. I don't know about you. like I, um, I get these spurts where I'm like, like the other day I stepped on that scale and I've the highest that I've ever been in my life, which is 210. Yeah. And I'm a pretty, like, like bigger upper body kind of guy, so. It's like you said, you're well aware. It's not like you're yeah. big or anything. Yeah, it's like, just, I, mean, I mean, I don't, but uh, kind of got me down, so I'm like, <laughs> you got you down. It's like, fuck, 210? That's the biggest I've ever been in my life. And so I was, I looked at it and it said that, Someone of my normal everything has to be 170 to be just the high end of the normal category. That's the high end? That's the high end of the normal Fuck category. That. And I was like, what? But then I looked and it like had calorie recommendations. It's like, but you can eat 3,000 calories as long as you burn 150 a day, then you will be losing about a pound a week to get to your goal. Something like that, because that's for somebody who's exercising, and I've been exercising. So if you're exercising, and then you set out to burn uh, an additional 150 than what you intake, if that makes any sense, mm-hmm. then you should be fine. Because whenever I'm trying to figure out my calorie recommendations, uh-huh. it's closer to like, to get to my goal weight, uh-huh. it's closer to like 1,500 calories. Yeah, but you're smaller than me. And that's like, Mari, she was kind of, <laughs> she was like... Fuck you. Yeah. So, 3,000 fucking calories. I, I mean, that's what, that, that made me happy. I'm like, oh, I could eat fucking 3,000 calories and I'm still good. And I'm a hungry bear. So <laughs> I don't know. What I, 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 I don't know, know if that's true. <laughs> well, I looked it up on a few different things and they're pretty similar. At least uh, for me, uh, just from my height and from, I don't know, just everything, my age. I don't even know if I could eat 3,000 calories. I don't think that I could either. I mean, and what what really sucks for me is the whole spoiled vegan syndrome where it's like for years and years and years, there wasn't a lot of good vegan junk food. Or if there was, it was really expensive. So it was Mm -hmm. either I couldn't afford it because I was too poor or the options didn't, didn't exist. And now I feel bad because I can afford it and there's a lot more options. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, and it, it makes it hard. And then plus, you know, how much I, I work. It's just I have so little time to do what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Like, um, but like I'll do it for like the longest I've set to a, um, a specific workout regimen is I did P90X for two and a half months. I almost did the full three mm-hmm. months. And I felt really good. And I saw little bits of results but not nearly what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And I pushed myself hard on it. Mm -hmm. And it really got me down. I'm like, man, I suck. I um, I was watching some videos the other day, like just some things on YouTube that are just as good as any of those other fucking videos that they sell. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I found a, I found a, I've been really wanting to, I, cause uh, in in doing P90X, you do yoga uh, Uh once a week and I fucking love it. Mm -hmm. Like I I love yoga. And so I've been wanting to do more and more yoga at home cause I, can't afford to go pay someone to do yoga it's fucking mm-hmm. expensive uh, let alone the time to get away and doing it um, I found a website they also have a YouTube channel where it's hundreds of at home yoga workouts sweet fucking for free can you still have Wii Yoga they have I have Wii Yoga yeah the, that fucking balance board thing you guys got like two years ago <laughs> it comes with the yoga doesn't it yeah there's your wheat right there. I see it. Yeah, it's not plugged in. No, oh, it's being used really well. Yeah, it's on a bookshelf. <laughs> wow. What? And children are starving in Africa. <laughs> yep. So. Wait, 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 what the fuck? I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm kidding. You're gonna make me like a douche because I have a weed. Like, <laughs> fuck. God, I'm not like a douche. I got a PS3. I play games. I'm a big time gamer. I was gonna say, well, if you're not using it, I'll borrow it. <laughs> but I would use it. I don't know. Anyways, this is a poll. So we got uh, uh, quite a few responses. It looks like um, 
most of the people work out at home do endurance stamina like cardiovascular mm-hmm. um what, which i guess would be like running things like that right mm-hmm. um or biking and things like that and then yoga those are the two big ones that most people do um yeah and more people looks like um, do it at home more people will do it at home than go into a gym half as much uh, yeah twice as much go work out yeah. at home mm-hmm. um then, Which is, it's it's good for like it's inspiring to me, mm-hmm. but how do I? Mo- I just need to get more motivated, I guess. And I guess it's really really hard hard for me is that like during the the spring and summer uh, we tried setting out to go um, on a hike every single Sunday, mm-hmm. and it was like we were going to do this. We set up all the routes we wanted to go to, and we went three times. Yeah, you know, That's it's such. just you know, or like. I, I watch my daughter at night most of the time because uh, Cal is dancing mm-hmm. so and not pole dancing I've tried talking to it a million times so much money anyways um, is somebody he, he points to somebody writing down dancing um, <laughs> somebody somebody put us another option that they <laughs> yes. that they bike and dance they bike and dance um, and so like I'm stuck with this it's not like I can go to the gym I have a free gym membership with where I live it's a pretty nice gym mm-hmm. um but I can't just go because I have her. What what day of the week is it? Like, is it the ninth? Today? Yeah. Today is Sunday. Yeah. Oh, but... Well... The ninth. Not to, not to date this podcast. Yeah, sorry. We, we but, made it. Yeah. Uh, but I... Uh, I bought a gym membership. Uh, it was valid on the first, and I've used it one time. And it's on almost a third of the month. <laughs> like... It's just like, fuck. That was that was my like that was my. You know what? I'm really gonna do this, and, and, like, and like I don't have much money either. But but like I was like I need to I need to do this for myself because well, I need to do this. And like when I did like this last year, it was like I signed up yeah. for the Tough Mudder because it's first time here in Utah. Mm-hmm. And like I'm I'm gonna do this. I was running all the time. Uh, I was doing the P90X, and then I hurt my my ankle. I rolled my ankle doing um, the plyometrics in the P90X, so that's why I ended up mm-hmm. stopping. And I had to stop running for a little while. And then I just never got back on it. Mm. And so when the Tough Mudder came around, which if you guys don't know, look it up. It's between a 10 and 12 mile obstacle course, which it was 12 miles here. Um, it, and it happened here in mid-October where it was about 40 degrees and raining and <laughs> snowing. Um, and all of a sudden, like, I had to do this huge obstacle course. I'm like, I paid fucking good money to do this. I'm going to fucking do it. Mm-hmm. It was the most challenging fucking thing I've ever done mainly because I wasn't completely ready and I probably shouldn't have done it. <laughs> like, honestly, like, yeah. I, it was... I'm bummed out I didn't do it. You know, and I'm going to do it again next year, but mm-hmm. I was clearly not ready for it, the, the level of intensity that it was. Partly it, the cold and the other part is just the 12 miles. Like, it's a long yeah. fucking time. Yeah, it is. You know, plus... You Plus know, freezing, freezing, water. free. Yeah, I mean, the second obstacle there was getting in free, like little freezing water and electricity. The obstacles were, were fun, and they they weren't the hard part. It was just the sheer. They were distance. fun. It's yeah, fun it was a lot of fun. Through electrical wires. It actually was like, <laughs> like it fucking hurt like shit. Don't get me wrong. Like I way underestimated like going through those electrical wires. Uh-huh. Um, I'm just like, oh, you know, I've touched, you know, I've touched electrical fences before. Yeah, yeah you fucking feel it. It doesn't feel great, but you can do it. Yeah. No, this is like fucking getting hit by a mule it was just boom and maybe i'm just a wuss which is totally true i am but you know like i'm running and you get hit and you're just falling face forward into mud and you can't control yourself like i couldn't even put my hands in front of me like it's just <laughs> ah! like <laughs> but like it was a lot of fun though it really yeah. was yeah uh, my favorite obstacle there was was the mud mile not to go off on it, where it's it's hill after hill after hill, where after the hill it goes down in about four feet of water, and then it's another hill on top of it. Uh-huh. So it's like four feet of water, and then a mud hill to get up, yeah, and then so drop down into like four feet of water. And so towards the end, you're just like, Whoa. well, even at the beginning, because it's you know it's not like we're the first ones. There's uh-huh. waves of people going through, and you couldn't climb up the hills in mud with, by yourself. There's just there's nothing to grab onto. It's too yeah. steep, and so you're you're in a line, basically, shoving people over. And then people are shoving you over. And, like, I have never, like, had so many people grab my ass. And I've never, like, 
had my hand slide in places that they probably shouldn't be and people thanking you for it. Like, <laughs> like it was just like completely insane. Like I fisted my brother-in-law, not you, the other one, mm-hmm. like trying to put, like, he was going in front of me, slipped and I was being pushed already. So like my hand just, whoop, <laughs> like, <laughs> but it was a lot, it was a lot of fun. But like, I was clearly not ready. And so like, I'm gonna do it again this next year. And I wanna, I wanna also do a triathlon either this year or next year sometime. I wanna do a triathlon um, pretty, pretty soon in my life. I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how these people have the motivation all the time. It's not a lack of wanting. And like, I, I'll argue all the time. It's, it's a lack of time, which I really don't have a lot of time. Mm. You don't have an excuse on that one. I do have, I do have an excuse. I am schooling. (sighs) How many hours a day do you go to school? Um, a day or a week? A day. Let's see. Um, Come on. Okay, which, do you go to school on tomorrow? Yes. What, from when to when? Well, tomorrow doesn't count. No, I'm just, why, why doesn't tomorrow count? Well, because it's my short school day, but it's my long work day. So I, it's, it's my, so I go to, from 7 to 11. Is I'm, that an average day of school? No. What's an average day of school? 7 to 2. 7 to 2. Okay. And how many days a week do you work? One day. Okay. So the only day you're saying you have a, a scheduling conflict is Monday. So that leaves you mm-hmm. six days a week. No. Some days suck too. I have to do this shit. <laughs> you five days a week completely open I mean I, I get called in sometimes but no I'm doing I'm doing homework as well and I'm not trying to criticize I'm in the same boat because like and I'm not getting paid to do these things <laughs> like I could I could find the time to work out at home mm-hmm. but when I the time I get home I have about a three hour block that I have to spend between doing homework uh, practicing musical instruments mm-hmm. and getting someone to cooking for her and then getting someone to bed. So I have about a three hour span to, to do all that in. Um, cause I wake up at four thirty in the morning. Mm-hmm. Like it's not like I, I need to get to bed relatively at a decent time, usually by 10, 10 30. But those are all just fucking excuses. Yeah. Like other people do it. I should be able to figure it out. My, you know, my thing is like, uh, I don't know, like I'll get stuck in traffic and then I get home and like uh, I have to do homework. I haven't yet done homework. And like what I hate it just starts getting like a lot of different little things. I, I never feel better than after a workout. I fucking yeah, love work. Like, even if I hate the workout, like I hate running. I've never liked running. Mm-hmm. Like I'll sit down and I'll run around the lake here, which is about five miles. I hate the entire time. As soon as I finish, <laughs> I'm like, that was awesome. You know, I hate yeah. the actual act. Yeah. I feel really good after. I feel accomplished. Yeah. So why can't I be more motivated to do it? I don't like running out, outside. You like, like you really like a treadmill? I do. Fuck treadmills. I can't like, do it. I will. And I want a treadmill just because, like, the snow and stuff. Like, I'll, put a, I'll put a podcast on or an audio book, and then I won't even listen to music. I'll just, like, distract my mind with what's being said and I'll just keep running and I'll be like oh well I've run seven miles I tr- I've tried running once on a treadmill listening to a podcast and I was listening to a, a Nerdist episode and I got about two miles into it and all of a sudden I was like fuck you Chris Hardwick fuck you fuck this <laughs> like I'm not even against the podcast or anything I'm just like fuck this running and like so he would say something and they're, they're interviewing a guest and I'm just like cursing him out like like <laughs> I, I couldn't it didn't didn't work well I for think, me. Yeah, last time I did it, I was uh, I was listening to an audio book, so <laughs> it's like you can't really take out your anger on anyone but the author. Yeah, yeah. fuck you, Harry Potter. Fuck you, because Harry Potter is the author. No, no, I, I, he's a character. You can take out all <laughs> yeah, characters. You can take out characters too. Voldemort should have killed you. No, I don't know. I I gotta figure out a better way to do it. I gotta get like I'm not. I hate. It's not like I'm whining here. I'm like in terrible shape, and I'm overweight, and and neither are you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? But anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, I'm a man. Sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, but uh, I mean, well, like I, 
I did work out a couple times at home this month as well, as mm-hmm. opposed to the gym. And, like, they're good workouts. Like, you can find, like, a 10-minute workout on YouTube, and it'll fucking wear you out. Yeah, there's no... I have no excuse. I'm not yeah. trying to say it. it's ridiculous. I really don't have an and excuse. So, I did, I did that the other day, a 10-minute workout, and then I learned how to actually do a crunch right. And... So I did, like, I didn't even do very many crunches, maybe 20 reps, but mm-hmm. the next morning my abs were killing me. I fucking love that and feeling. That's, I that's, need that way more. And that's just because I learned how to do a crunch right. Uh, and so, like, yeah. Like, you, it's, crunches are very I just, I think I need to set up a, like, I need to, like, trick my brain and, like, <laughs> not going to say trick my brain, but I just need to give myself a good enough reward, you know? Um, whether that's a physical or not. Like, if, like, a, like an actual object is, like... But I need to do something, and I need to quit eating junk food. Like, I did really good for a long time. I quit, like, drinking a soda for like, three Snoopy months. Snack. Get a what? Scooby snack. What's a Snoopy snack? Scooby snack. Scooby snack? Scooby do. What the fuck is that? Every time every time Scooby does something good, he gets a Scooby snack. I never watched Scooby Doo. That was also slang for treats in person. Scooby snacks. For treats for someone? In prison. Oh. I, you get your prison. You get your Scooby snack. I thought you were talking about marijuana. No. Oh. No. Okay. No. I think marijuana makes more sense. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, Jackie and Scooby were probably getting high half the time. Exactly. Yeah. That's, <laughs> why, that's why it's more of my mind. Sure, why not? Like, straight. Yeah. <laughs> I want some weed. <laughs> yes. That's going to be my incentive. If I work out, I'll get myself some weed. <laughs> I don't know what I'd do with it. Uh, I don't. I don't. Yeah, yeah. You could, uh, I've only seen weed once in my life, which is kind of funny to think about. They're all over my parents' lawn. <laughs> ah, under the tomatoes. Under the. T- <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not. No, they're not. <laughs> oh, that was last year. Sorry. Whatever. <laughs> okay, well, we're at an hour. Should we? Yeah. Let's let's call this word. Which side are you on? The right side. <laughs> Sir, is it true you were a crack cocaine dealer for seven years? I I plead the fifth. <laughs> Sir, will you tell us about the cartels you dealt with in your time as a crack cocaine dealer? Um, no, but I can tell you that I plead the physics. Exactly how much money did you earn in your time as a crack cocaine dealer? There! I, I said there are so many amendments in the Constitution of the United States of America. I can only choose one. <laughs> I can only choose one. I plead the fifth. I plead the fifth. Five. One, two, three, four, fifth. Anything you say, fifth. Go ahead and ask me a question. Did you? Fifth. I have a secret document that I think you need to say. <laughs> All, sir. Good afternoon. I got your sentence reduced to a month. Oh!